Jason, everybody, give it up. Holy shit. Jason's everywhere, man. He's entertaining here on, on certain nights. He's uh, he's in the streets. He's at festivals. You never know what he's doing, except for one thing you could ask him. Just go up to him and ask him what he does, where he's going to be, etc., etc. I'll walk up to him like a human being and say, what the fuck are you all about? Highly recommended. Jason, give him a round of applause. Yeah. All right, so despite my alcoholism tonight, apparently we're doing a show. Uh, it's good to be here if this is where we are. Thanks everybody for coming. I saw a whole bunch of people. The bus let out from the other two open mics and now you're here <laughs> in the dregs with us. By the way, tonight I made an executive decision with the Reverend Angel Dust help. Give him a round of applause. No, who's cooler than that? That fucking guy. You wish you were that cold. You wish she smoked that much marijuana. You wish she legalized marijuana, not just for planet Earth, but the whole fucking universe and all the fucking space mammals that live around us. You wish. You wish you were that cool. Marijuana on the moon! That, who said that? We got Mars. Yeah, I didn't see your contribution. We got marijuana on the moon. I'm watching the Facebook. We have marijuana on the moon contribution. You gotta get on there with your fucking email and whatever, however you pay for shit, and give us ten dollars. All right, we need money. Where's that bucket? Here it is. Here's the bucket. Here, pass that around. We're in church. Let's go. Let's go. We'll take condoms, methamphetamines, uh, dumpster scores, whatever you got. Throw some shit in there. All right. Acid, M MSD, L LPD, goofballs. Just throw some shit in there, alright? Throw your keys in there. Throw the keys to your car in there. Throw your hey, if you happen to be if you happen to be going around with a fucking cat that's famous on the internet, throw your cat in there. Whatever you got. Throw it in there. We deserve it. We're pretty good at what we do. We've been doing this show for 38 years. Holy shit, my balls, my balls just dropped off. If anybody sees my balls, bring them back to me at the end of the show. I'll go to Shans, have to sew them back on. Yeah. Fucking Shans, right? What is this town? Nobody knows. Is it is it Shans? No. Is it football? Are we Gator Nation? What are we? What the fuck are we, man? Some weird blue enclave in Florida? Are we the Nazis? God only knows. All I can tell you is we are a church of legalizing marijuana. And we say one thing and one thing only. Do that which is right. And if you didn't put anything in this bucket, you failed. <laughs> the other thing about this show, normally, it's one of the most decadent open mic shows in the history of humanity. Yeah. Have we not had bubbles? Have we not had bubbles? Have, have we not had around the corner, all of the drugs available to humanity. Yes. Have we not been polite to you and also rude to you? Have we not told you it's a free speech stage for everyone and also said, get the fuck out of here, something's wrong with you? We've done everything at this show. We've given you our heart, our souls, everything we have, and all we have, this is the show. And all, all we ask of you, all we ask of you is that you, thank you very much. This is all we ask of you. Just write in the bucket there. Just to drop it right in. Thank you very much. You're awesome. I will follow you online. You let me know where you are. Thank you. Look at that. A fucking receipt. That's what I'm talking about. Look at this. A credit card. You know what we're going to do with this credit card? We're going to pay that fucking receipt. That's how we roll here at the Tabernacle of Hades. Now I told everybody this, no bubbles tonight. No, we're not going to do it. No special music in between the acts. We're going guts and blood. We're going, yeah, we're going guts and glory. We're just going to introduce the acts and then the acts are going to perform. 
And that's all we're going to do tonight. Oh, By God, oh, I sacrifice these $1.25 Chinese made fucking 2.50. My eyes, you understand? My eyes! I sacrifice this for the glory of this show. We're just going to introduce the axe. Ah! That's all we're going to do. Reverend, give this back to me. I need this. I can't see that. We're not fucking around in here. All right. Where's that napkin with the set list on it? All right. No bubbles. You get bubbles next week. Here, here. You want bubbles? That's it. There. That's all the bubbles you get. Yeah. Reverend, I need that back. There's some bubbles. See, we have to wash the dishes here tonight. How about it for, uh, uh, I don't know, just fucking applaud and shut the fuck up. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's introduce some people. Let's go, let's go. All right. You're in a great town. Gainesville, Florida. Even we have serial killers. How about it for... He's not a serial killer, and he does not, I just want to make clear, he does not advocate serial killing either. But he is a bard. He's a bard. He's a real bard. He plays guitar, and he tells you the stories impassionately. He just tells you what happened. All right? So don't fucking judge. Don't judge. Just welcome him to the stage, because who doesn't want to learn more about serial killers? The one, the only, Tapeworm. Give him a round of applause. Testies, testies. Alright. You can only get this in all the other open mics. <laughs> so it's Patrick Cheryl's birthday. Patrick Cheryl, don't uh, turn it 82 today. We owe, we owe a lot to Patrick Cheryl for American pop culture. He's actually the reason we call it going postal. Back in 1986. He's not a serial killer, he was a mass shooter. What's the difference? Spree killer, yeah. If this sounds like Pink Floyd, it's because I stole it from Pink Floyd. Carrier Patrick Cheryl became my race. Discipline to reach the breaking point, seething with hate. The early August 20th, 1986 was the date. Edmond was a town in Oklahoma, was a state. <laughs> Showing up to work that morning was a big mistake. The lazy, lucky supervisor was an hour late. 45 slugs ricocheted, they fly every which way. Locking door behind them so there would be no escape. In retrospect, he seemed a little strange. Shit. He saved some lead to put in his own brain. 14 of his co workers died on that bloody day. 15 minutes of mayhem, then 15 minutes of fame. Going postal became something people say. Yeah. You hear the Pink Floyd in it though? Alright. Awesome, Alright. Oh, Peter Sutcliffe's death day today. Uh, Peter Sutcliffe died in prison three years ago today of the coronavirus. He worked at the mortuary committing necro-larceny by stealing
stealing rings off stiff dead fingers and probably much darker things. He lost that job late too many times, hired on to drive a lorry when he and Sonya were married. His facade seemed ordinary, his hair and beard was trimmed neatly, his dark eyes peering and beady. He later claimed to have heard Jesus telling him to rid the streets of bookers who might have diseases, making sure nobody sees his tools of torture beneath the driver seen you best let him sleep a hammer using bludgeoning brains and he called it head banging other tools for mutilating not called the ripper for no reason bloodthirsty misogyny a year-round human hunting season from the red light district peter takes and beats and guts and leaves them feminists attack the cinema red paint was thrown on the screen protesting the mentality of the 20th century he killed wilma and he killed him in a reporting to convincing authorities. Secretly, Peter carries on with his five-year murder spree when they caught him finally. Fuck, oh, I can't fucking do it. Sorry. All right, well, whatever. Man, that's the one I know, and I can't do it today for some reason. All right, Nathaniel Schaffner's death day yesterday, 18 years ago, he was shot by these uh, tweakers who were driving around in Phoenix, Arizona. And Nathaniel Schaffner tried to save the dog, but they shot him and the dog. Thirteen months of burning stuff and murder in 2005 and six around Phoenix for Sam Deep and in Dale Hauser Drive. Killer called the baseline rapist, active at the same time, was not safe in broad daylight, even less so in the night. A photojournalist for Fight News Dale interviewed Mike Tyson with habits to satisfy Dale and Sam went out to buy some mess. They made a mess around Mesa, people stayed inside. When Nathaniel Schaffner tried to save a canine, they both died. Whoever wrote a shotgun would load the shotgun and snort a couple of lines on the hunt. The shooter spies a target through his bloodshot eyes. A story made the news, the snipers laughed. The victim's family cried. Ashley Armanta took a shot to the head. Somehow survived. Random pedestrians were blasted. Their modest offer around eyes spread trepidation far and wide. No turning back, no end in sight. It was like a game. How many points for someone on a bike? On the last day of July, they were finally identified. The story made the news. I fucked that one up too. All right, you know what? I got, I got another one. Woo! Finish it! Yeah! Yeah, all right, all right, I'll finish. It's an important part because the cops fucked this one up, so I get Detectives put a tail on them under surveillance and high evidence began to pile up. No doubt they were the guys. Deepman was sentenced to life. Hausner committed suicide with a nice try, but didn't quite atone for his 88 crimes. As for the baseline rapist who by this time had murdered nine, the PPD could have solved the case long before, but they fell behind with key DNA evidence. Lazy cops failed to analyze. Hard to comprehend incompetence could have such a high price. Alright. Thanks. Bell Gunnist's birthday yesterday, day before yesterday, uh, Bell Gunnist turned 164. I can't fuck this one up. Her love letters won their hearts, they trusted her and found her charming, bringing all her money with them to her Indiana farm, believing her to be quite formless. We're convinced to purchase large life insurance policies, this was part of her plan. She took them by the arm, post-mortem amputations in the bloody hay, out in the barn, and then, 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 then I fucked it up. Because I say that I can't fuck it up, and I fuck it up. All right. Real quick, here's, here's a pretty new one that I just fucked up. It's a Florida serial killer, uh, Gerald Stano. He murdered Mary Muldoon 46 years ago yesterday. Bear with me, this one has a... Uh, part that just doesn't change. He went to bed until he was in, got a high school education. He resented the rejection that the cheerleader type gave him. Soon after his graduation, he starts work at the gas station. Started failing all my title urges. Soon Gerald Draven, hitchhikers and prostitutes were plentiful and easy prey. Went out cruising in his red gremlin with no hesitation. Gunshot blast, knife blade slashes, drowning and or strangulation. Soon the big friends moved to Daytona Beach, all the way from Dayton. 
sensation for he were killed each time it gave him a powerful sensation Gerald blamed women for original sin with a Christian fixation with a coroner's mistake if I want it worth he didn't embrace him unless you count that short time like some kind of surrogate penetration surfers in years of heart the heart incarceration they turned his brains into scrambled eggs his goose was cooked and fried like bacon ah fuck that one up too Well, uh, yesterday's Manson's birthday, but y'all gotta go to the, the, the show on Sunday at the CMC if you want to hear the Manson song. Alright. Andy Partridge's birthday today. Fuck, it's not even today. The day before yesterday. He turned 70. But, so I'm gonna play an XTC cover. Because this is a church. This is a very spiritual song. God, let me get this letter and I pray that you could make it better now, dear. I don't mean a big reduction in the price of beer. All the people you made in your image, people starving on the street because they can't get enough to eat from God. God, sorry to disturb you, but I feel that I shall be heard loud and clear. We need a big reduction in amount of tears. All the people you made in your image see them fighting on the street because they can't make opinions to me about kids what's going on here this is called okay I'm introducing the according to the let me put on my spectacles oh boy get off my lawn where's the napkin lads are you the napkin lads how did you get a number two well you have to go on I mean you know that's you want to wait you want to wait a minute Let's go right now. Let's go right now. 
It's your show now. It's not my show anymore. All right, the napkin lads. What you're about to watch makes no sense. This is poetry and juggling live in front of you. Yeah, Are you going to juggle the poems and try to read them while they're in flight? I'm going to read words like... A world of clarinet dreams, well lit and well warm, what a quaint scene, this time with all so serene. New picks and new practices, old friends introduce new acquaintances. Let's see. The guardian of sanity, sanity being something similar to the Monday morning drag, and that makes some sort of sense to me. Time moves on and on. How can we stay like this forever? I reach out to touch a stranger's passing smile. Please remember your joy. Place to place in time. Never stay somewhere too long. On and on we go. On and on we go. Let's see. A lot of these poems are about leaving. Staying in one place, what a strange way to be, this monotony. I'm beginning to become exhausted in life, all the time being asked to make decisions, a constant need for precision. When will life grow up and make its own mind up? I'm a sucker for a love story, but lately I've been reconsidering its reality, for when one does not even interact with self-love, how can they touch that special place through others? A life spectoral, to drift through spaces, dreams of returning to the pastoral and wandering through the wastelands. All we wanted was a direction. Ah All we got was juggling. Whoa! Okay. to make, which is, if anybody knows Julio, who might have come here in the past, um, you can come talk to me after, I'll be around for a little while, but he's in jail and could use some support if you wanted to send letters or anything, and he has a bond hearing tomorrow at 1.30 at the courthouse, so yeah, come up and ask me about that if you know him. Thank you. Thank you. If you didn't hear that, go up and ask, find out about Julio, and uh, cough up some dough. I'll tell you what, the tabernacle is lacking in dough, and uh, you know, dough is the way for you know us to show compassion. If you make a little money, cough it up. It's always free to get in here, you know that, right? And you know that when you come in here, I know some of you think that we... <laughs> We take more value from you than you give to us when you come in here. I know, but it's actually not true. We actually give you more value, and it's fucking free to get in here. Are the drinks free? No. Do you have to tip the bartender? Yes. You got to help Julio out? Sure. But for God's sakes, cough up the dough for local arts. Will you do that? Will you do that to keep Gainesville weird and wonderful? Because you know what it turns into if you don't. Chance. Yeah. <laughs> and they have so much money in chance. Now I'm going there to get my new hip, as many of you know. And my new eyes, my new face, my new liver, and my new drinking habits. I can't wait to go. 